it's time to combine my two favorite things, books and memes. <laughs> Hello friends, how are we doing? Today, <laughs> today we're doing a video that was suggested by one of my patrons. So on my Discord for my Patreon, I have a section where people can suggest video ideas and I often do them because they often have the best ideas. Can you see the books here? Maybe a little bit, a little sneaky, sneaky tease. You naughty naughty, you teasing me, you naughty naughty. <laughs> And someone suggested that I do the memes as book recommendations video. Now I've done this once before, don't go looking for it because it was like 10 years ago and I'm much shyer and like, no baby Megan. <laughs> but I have done it once before, but I thought, you know what, let's do it again. So I asked them yesterday on my Discord for like the favorite memes that I use. And I've got some book recommendations based on them. Now listen, I just wanna say once again, some people don't like the memes and that's their prerogative. But like I said in that first video when I did this, they're wrong. <laughs> makes me enjoy editing or makes me enjoy making videos. I like making fun of myself and they're a fun way to do that. So yeah, you know what? They're never going away. So um, deal with it. <laughs> so the first one that we're gonna give a recommendation based on is... I've connected the two dots. You didn't connect shit, but I've connected them. And of course this has to be a mystery, right? I've connected the dots. This has to be like a mystery solving kind of book. And I have chosen a recent favorite mystery and that is The Mysterious Case of the Aperture Angels by Janice Hallett because there's, oh my God. I, I thought, thought I was, was gonna, gonna die. die. <laughs> window cleaner. Okay, I'm just gonna stop filming well, the window cleaner cleans the windows because you can probably hear it. Okay, one sec. Yeah, The Mysterious Case of the Aperture Angels, I chose because this has more dots than I feel like any book in existence. There's a lot of dots to connect. <laughs> We're following the story of these investigative journalists investigating this case from about 20 years ago, I was like 18 years ago, <laughs> of this cult who tried to convince a young girl to kill her baby as like a sacrifice. Um, the girl, the baby went into like witness protection, whatever, we don't know who they are anymore. And these investigative journalists are trying to piece together what happened. And it's emails, it's text conversations, there's pieces of media inspired by this case that they're consulting. And I always say, if you're gonna read this book, you have to read it in like, a day, two days. I think I read it across three and that was pushing it because there are so many dots. You've got so many characters that we are consulting and talking to who all have like slightly different perceptions of what happened that night. We're talking to like police or uh, invet or like child support people or whatever. Like, oh, there's all these kind of people who met with people that night and saw little pieces of what happened. And they've all got slightly different interpretations of what happened. And so there's a lot of dots to connect. <laughs> There's a lot of dots to connect. And I connected some of them, but not a lot of them. So yeah, that's why I chose this one. I think it's a solid mystery. I really enjoy Janice Hallett's vibe, like what she's going for. She's doing a lot of new stuff, I feel like, in the mystery genre. And I think this is her best one out of all of them. I feel like it's also her most accessible one. I really love the Twyford Code. That has a great twist at the end, but it is through all audio files that have been transcribed by an audio software. And so it's a bit more like, this is a bit more easy to read, you know? Then we have a personal favorite. The rules don't apply. I, I love that one. I love, I wish I could use it in every freaking video. I love it. The rules don't apply. And for this, I have chosen Wrong Place, Wrong Time by Janine McAllister because the usual rules of the universe and of the world and of time, they don't apply, babes. They don't apply. They <laughs> got out the window. This is another favorite that I feel like you guys have heard me speak about a lot lately. We're following this mother who witnesses her son kill someone, murder someone, and she's distraught. She can't believe, why would this happen? Her, her son's like a teenager. But she goes to sleep that night and she wakes up and it's the day before. And then it's the day before that. And then it's the week before that. And she keeps going back in time. And she figures out that she really needs to kind of figure out what happened, why he was led up to that murder, what, what led to that point and try to stop it basically. I just think this is such a special book. Firstly, it's so cool. The kind of like speculative time travel, reversing time element is so cool because she's trying to solve this mystery. She can talk to people that day, right? But then she goes back and it's the day before and that conversation never happened to that person. So she's really on her own in this. Also, it's about a mother's love for her son, you know? It's about the lengths that a mother will go to for their child. And I think that's really beautiful. And the conversations that it has around family relationships and love and like a 
appreciating your family. Um, I think it's wonderful. There's also stuff around her dad who is dead at the time of the murder, but then obviously she goes back in time and that's very emotional. So there's a lot of elements that I loved about this and I'm really excited to read loads of Gillian McAllister going forward because I just think this was such a cool book, so unique. So if you haven't picked this up yet, I would really recommend you do. I think this is something that almost anyone could enjoy. I think it's great, fun, amazing, says a lot, unique. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique. Incredible. I'm not using the Lady Gaga uh, <laughs> uh, meme today, but we can insert that here because that's the vibe. Then we've got a meme that's very easy for me to use because I love women, and that's... Women. Yeah. I mean, we love women. We love women. <laughs> and I read a lot about books about women and by women. I read a lot about women, right? Women, right? It's just, it's just the vibe. I like women. I like reading about women. I like reading from women. Women, okay? I thought, like, what am I gonna recommend for this? Because there's like a ton, right? But I just wanted to mention a book I haven't mentioned in a while that I love and I do want to reread within the next couple of years because it was so special. It was such a unique book. And that is The Once and Future Witches by Alex E. Harrow. In this, we're following women, we're following three sisters. And it really is, again, about, I see, I love family relationships, I think, in books. And particularly, we know I love sisters, right? And this is like peak sisters. It is in 1893. It's about these, these, sisters kind of discovering are they witches do they have magical powers it's wrapped up in a suffragettes suffragists Suff not suffragettes suffragettes <laughs> my mouth i can't speak i'm just gonna shut down and i don't want to talk about it in New Salem and you know witches shouldn't exist there's all this like you know witch fear witch trials like if a witch uh, occurs we got a killer whatever but again this is about sister relationships and sister love for one another and the journey that they go on this is over quite a good amount of time this book and I need to reread it because I read it super quickly I was like I'm having to read it quick for it to get a video out right I just feel like I want to read it again and really take my time with it and like take it slowly but the writing in this is incredible it's so luscious it's so vivid Alex E. Harrow I need to read 10,000 Doors January I'm really excited for her release this year which is uh, Starling House I believe I'm just so excited and I just want everyone to read this because I think it's such a special book you know when you encounter a book and you're like this is just like special it's giving special <laughs> That's how I feel about this book. And I feel like I don't speak bad enough because I don't have the best memory of it, but everything I do remember I love. Like it was a five star, it was my second favorite book of 2022, I wanna say, no, 2021. 2021, yes. It was my second favorite book and I loved it, but because I read it quickly, I found that my memory of it has been dissipating quicker than some other books. So I need to reread it and you need to read it. Then we have a personal favorite again. We are going to pretend we didn't hear that. I like using this one because it's like, I'm like, guys, let's ignore that. Let's ignore whatever I just said or whatever just happened. And the book that I think gives off this vibe is The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. If you followed my Tiffany D. Jackson journey, you'll know I didn't love the first two books I read from her. I think I gave a two and a three. And I always felt like the synopses were 10 out of 10. And I felt like if I didn't give this a high rating, I would have to stop reading from Tiffany D. Jackson because it just wasn't fair, right? I don't think it's fair to an author if I know there's something about me and them that don't vibe for me to keep picking up their books and giving them a low rating and saying to you, I don't like it. Like, I don't think that's fair. So I was like, this is our last chance, right? And it was a five star. And the reason that this is, we're gonna pretend we didn't hear that, is this book opens with a podcast called Maddie Did It, talking about how this boy like stumbled at home and he was covered in blood, covered in the blood of other children. When he's asked what happened, he kept mumbling, Maddie did it, right? That's what the whole podcast is about. And we find out that there was like this terrible event at the first biracial prom that this high school held because before they had segregated proms, which I can't even believe, like I suppose I can believe that was a thing, but like what an what a indictment, is that what I wanna say, against humanity? Like what a, I just hate people. Anyways, so the reason that this, I think, links to the meme is because we're rooting for Maddie, right? We meet Maddie, she's been bullied, she's biracial, she has been passing as white, but then she gets outed as being mixed race. Her father has been the one trying to force her to pass as white. She's only been left with her white father alive. So you're with Maddie for a lot of the book and you're really rooting for her. You're like, okay, I, we're gonna pretend we didn't hear that. The story about her, like, doing something terrible at the prom that led to this guy coming home in the blood of other children. We're gonna pretend we didn't hear that. I'm just gonna ignore that because, you know, Maddie, whatever you did was just fine. <laughs> the 
this is a Carrie retelling. So I've never read Carrie. I've only just begun my Stephen King journey, which you're gonna see soon in the video, hopefully. But I don't know how I would have reacted to this had I read Carrie, but I loved this story. Like I loved it. I loved the podcast element. I loved the kind of different perspectives that we focused on. I thought it focused on like perspectives that were uncomfortable to focus on really, really well. I just loved it. And I'm so excited because now I can read Tiffany D. Jackson and like not feel guilt. I'm like, woo! <laughs> Then we have another favourite from Charity Shop, Sue, an icon, a legend. Give us season two, Sue. I'm, I need it. The memes require it. <laughs> I'm gonna collapse. No, I don't. I feel faint. I've struck gold, ladies. And the book I've chosen for this is Legends and Lattes by Travis Boudry. Listen, personally, it's because I have struck gold with this book. It is still, I think, my favourite book of the year that I've read so far. Anything will struggle to, to top it, I feel like. Okay, now I'm gonna top. You guys know what this book is about. We're following an orc who creates a coffee shop and it's, oh my God, it's the most beautiful book that ever exists. <laughs> but also, you know, the coffee shop like does so well. It feels like they've struck gold. Like the coffee shop is a great, that's not a spoiler really, but like the coffee shop is like, oh my God, everything's going so great, whatever. Yes, things might go wrong, but like at the start of the book, like the people are coming and they love the little cakes and the coffee and the <laughs> You guys, I can't tell you how wonderful this book is. If you haven't read it yet, like, where are you? Where are you? This video is basically a way for me to tell you, like, the books that I feel like you absolutely have to read. Well, a few of these I feel like you don't have to. But these first few, the first few I've picked, I'm like, you just have to do it. Like, you're missing out. <laughs> this is, like, I think the most perfect book in the world. I'm so excited for Bookshops and Bone Dust. Like, I literally am salivating at the mouth. I'm probably going to reread this at some point this year because I just think it's the best book to ever exist. I loved it. I loved every moment of it. It was warm, comforting. It was a hug and a book. It's like the best book to ever exist. So, yep. <laughs> then we have... <laughs> I have chosen True Crime Story by Joseph Knox because we know someone here is a liar. It's another mystery following um, the story of this girl who was a student in Manchester who went missing and is presumed dead and it's kind of interviews with all the people in her life basically at the time trying to tell the story of what happened and like I feel like you know from the beginning someone here is a liar someone that's getting interviewed is going to end up being the culprit because I feel like it'd be a cop out of someone or like one of the characters in the book right not saying on the interviews there's other characters the author himself is a character it could be anyone in the book, right? But you know someone's lying. You know someone's a liar. And I think that's fun to read. When it's interviews like this, you can really pick apart what every person is saying and try to find the you know odd one out or try to find the truth behind what is happening and I just think that's really fun I think this is a great book I think it's such a fun experience you know it's all interviews the author's a character I mean it can't get any better like it's just so much fun yeah there's like newspaper stuff I just think it's such a fun book and I can't recommend it to you guys enough like if you just want a fun mystery time this one then another patron's favorite that was recommended is it's not for me Mark I'm, I feel terribly ill all of a sudden and for this I have chosen a new favorite Finney Donovan is Killing It by El Cosimano. I've spoken about this quite a bit lately, but listen, Finley, if you know, you know, she's just like a single mom. She's like a little author. I think she writes like, does she write romance books? I don't know. She's like a little author writing books. And someone suggests to her, I think you're an assassin. Do you want to kill my husband? <laughs> She's like, it's not for me, Mark. I feel terribly all of a sudden. She's just like bumbling. Like that sets up a chain of events where she just bumbles through life not doing a great job of doing the correct things in the situations that she should. She's like, it's not for me, Mark. I feel terribly upset. It is stressful. She's like, fuck it up, left, right, and center. I'm like, Finley, Jesus Christ, it is not for you. <laughs> this has been widely praised, left, right, and center. Everyone, I feel like, who's read it has loved it. Everyone told me to read it for like a year. I did, and I loved it. So like, what more is there to say? I thought the characters were great, I thought the mystery plot was great, I thought the pacing was great. This is just a great book and I can see why everyone loves it and I feel like, again, this is one that so many people would enjoy. And then the final meme is... It's camp! It's camp! I don't know what to tell you! Listen, I thought about what to pick for this, right? And I just have to go to who I see as the king of camp at this point and it is Grady Hendrix. I've read one book but I feel like I know all of his books are camp. It's camp! I don't have to tell you. Yes, it's like you know, old white women camp. <laughs> 
But this is the campy horror that I enjoy. If, I'm already going to read all the Grady Hendrix, right? But if you have any other horror that you think I'd enjoy, I like camp horror. I like ridiculous. I like over the top. Not actually super scary and violent. This one, we are following uh, a support group for final girls. So girls, well, they're now old women, but when uh, they were like parts of mass murderers and they were the survivors, basically. And then someone starts hunting them down once again, the women in this support group. And look, there's like at the start of every chapter, there's like a reddit thread or a newspaper article or a, 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 a <laughs> doctor like therapist report or a VHS copy the box copy or whatever there's all this stuff and it's just fun it's camp it's camp I don't have to tell you like, I really enjoyed this I gave it four stars it wasn't quite a five for me I think this is the only one on this list that wasn't a five but it made me so excited to read more Grady Hendrix and I know there's a five in the archives. I know there's a five in the archives for Grady Hendrix. I just know it. I feel it in my bones. I'm excited to read more, but listen, Grady Hendrix is camp. This camp, I don't tell you. <laughs> so there we have it, everyone. That is meme, no, book recommendations based on memes. I'll say meme recommendations. If you want meme recommendations, listen, you know you're in the place to be. <laughs> But let me know what you thought of any of these books. These are all books that I really love that I just want to push on you again. Remind you if you haven't picked this up yet, read them. Like, what are you wait what are you waiting for? I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got to the end, comment an angel wings or wings emoji, because that's staring at me from out to angels. Comment wings emoji or anything to do with wings. If that is an angel, anything to do with that, down below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye!